This week's coffee is going to be El Salvador San Rafael Fully Washed Pacas Varietal. So hello everybody and welcome to In My Mug, In My Mug, In My Mug, episode 190. Um, and today I am excited. I know I'm always excited, but I'm particularly excited this week. We've got something that is a little bit special. So it's a farm that we are in our second year with. Another one of our direct trade coffees uh, from El Salvador. And it's a coffee I'm really happy to see back because I think we've really built on it. Um, as I say, I do think this one's going to be a little bit special. So what happened in January this year, I went to El Salvador and went and visited the farm. Um, and while I was there, I asked them if they would also do as a natural process of the Bourbon, which uh, we had a washed version last year, so now we have the washed and the natural, uh, which they were very happy to do. And they're going to be on the site really soon. Um, and then this happened. But before we get there, we should talk about the farm a little bit. So. The farm began in 1905 um, by the father of the present owner. Uh, the guy uh, was who, who set it up, Don Francisco Alberto Pacas. Um, and the farm lies at around about 1,400 metres above sea level uh, in the Cantan uh, Apollo Campana, which is near to the city of Santa Ana, which we'll see in the map bit. Um, and uh, a farm that I've passed a few times. So. Um, Fran Don Francesco, who owned the farm originally, was obsessed with varietals and experimentation and um, found that he liked Bourbon, he liked to work with Bourbon and um, the, the whole farm, as far as he was concerned, that's the same track to my life by the way, uh, was, was Bourbon. Um, and when I went to visit the farm, um, it was, it was really strange because I, I, I say I've passed this farm like five, six times in the past. Passed in the past, but as, as I've been travelling around on Santa Ana, uh, I'd passed this farm and clocked to San Rafael but not put the two and two together. Um, and it's very close to a farm that we've bought from for a long time. So anyway, I'm visiting the farm, doing my normal walk around, uh, checking the conditions, talking to the people who are picking, uh, looking at the trees, um, until one does about kind of to talk about varieties. So we were talking about the Bourbon and, and why Bourbon was there. And, you know, why 100% Bourbon if uh, Don Francesco was so into doing different varietals. And he says, well, we do have a small amount of Pacas. Um, so being the, the coffee buyer that I am, I, I asked them if they would separate it. And they said, sure, yeah, no one's ever asked us to, but we can do that um, as long as you're prepared to buy it regardless. Um, and then the farm manager pipes in and starts telling me about there's a story attached to the Pacas. So, rewind to 1930, uh, Don Francesco replanted three quarters of a manzana um, of the farm with seed stock from some trees that he'd seen on the farm that were doing particularly well. These seemed to yield much more than the other Bourbon trees. They seemed healthier. They seemed to fry, thrive, in the, in, thrive, thrive in the environment. Um, and he thought, well, if I take those and plant this part, it could be really interesting. And he found that when he planted them, he was yielding up to 20% more from these plants as he was from the rest of the Bourbon. So they got nicknamed San Ramon Bourbon. And then 1956, uh, this question of what this coffee was kind of got too much for Don Fran Francisco. So he sought uh, to find out what the plant was. He sat down and decided how he was going to do that. He enlisted the help of a botanist from a visiting university in Florida called Dr. Cogwill, um, who was interested too to see why these trees yielded more than the other Bourbon trees. So he took two trees away with him. And the story goes, and I'm not sure about this one, but I, I kind of like it that Dr. Cogwill uh, forgot to label the trees. Uh, he meant to label them San Rafael Farm and forgot, and got back to California and forgot the name of the farm 
but he remembered the name of the family that owned the farm. So, hence the name Pacas was born and the varietal Pacas was born. So, he took them back and found it that it was a mutation of the Bourbon, um, a natural mutation that had happened. And, um, yeah, that, I think it's really cool. So, this is where Pacas came from. And then Pacamara, which is a, uh, a hybrid of uh, Pacas and Maragajip. And we would never have had all of these amazing coffees were it not for this initial thing that happened years and years ago. Um, but the thing I found most surprising is nobody has ever thought, why don't we separate these and try them and see what the pack ass is like compared to the Bourbon. So they've just always been picked and mixed in together, um, which... It's sad for the Bourbon, because it's always good to have 100% Bourbon if you can you know, narrow it down into the, the, the specific uh, varietal. But like this Pacas, is, this is the first Pacas. So, yeah, sure, there may have been other Pacas in El Salvador before this, and I will accept that. But this was the first one that was called Pacas and could have so easily been called um, San Rafael as a, as a, as a, as a varietal name. Um, Interestingly, the following day, I went to go and see Santa Patrona that we talked about on here a few weeks ago. And on Santa Patrona, they were saying, oh yeah, we've got 5% of the farm is Pacas here. This is actually the second farm uh, that Pacas was uh, transported to um, after Pacas was originally found. And I was like, all right. I said, uh, San Rafael. And they were like, yeah, how do you know? Uh, well, and went into the story that I'd been there. So... Uh, the owners of San Rafael and the owners of Santa Patrona are both from the Pacas family. They're a huge family and name in El Salvador and have done lots of good things to improve the quality of coffee in El Salvador. So, but it was really cool that uh, next year we've asked uh, Santa Patrona to also separate the, the Pacas. So we're going to do a, we can do a taste off of San Rafael against Santa Patrona. So anyway, uh, time for the map bit. It's the map bit. No expense spent, it's the map bit. So, here we are again. We're zooming out and on our familiar route across the um, Atlantic Ocean. Sorry, my mental blocks there. So we're going across and we're going to go to one of my favourite countries. Uh, one of my favourite countries to visit, favourite countries to buy coffee from is uh, El Salvador. And you can see here there's a line. There's a line of places that we buy coffee from here. Uh, we've got El Retiro, we've got Santa Patrona, we've got San Jose, uh, Finca Argentina. But what we're looking at today is San Rafael, which is the closest to the Santrana Volcano, which you can just see to the south. Um, and we're doing some clever camera stuff here. So uh, in the distance there, you can see Guatemala uh, and uh, Nicaragua to the right. Um, and down to the level. Now I tried to be clever with the camera for this, but this chews up so much memory and my computer didn't have so much memory to do. So um, I'm gonna do the best that I can to kind of make it uh, change the view a little bit so you can see a little bit more, so you, and you can see the terrain. So this is on really on the slopes of the Santrana volcano. Um, the, the, when I said in, that I passed this farm a few times, um, La Lujon is around about 200 metres up the mountain. Um, you can just see in the distance there, you've got the Nicaraguans, so uh, kind of that's how close you are. And then coming back round, you can see that you know, you've got La Fanny there too, which is just behind Retiro. Um, and more funky camera angles. So that is Guatemala to the left-hand side there, and, and straight ahead, those mountains of Guatemala mountains. And that is the map bit. It's the map bit. No expense spent, it's the map bit. I love map bits when it's places I've been to and I can remember it and the roads. and It's all very cool. Um, yeah, but, but a, a really kind of a proper coffee place like you go up that road and you can find pretty much all of the names of El Salvador uh, coffee and um, yeah it's it's pretty amazing that that whole Santrana volcano kind of region and, and around the town of Santrana just has some stunning stunning coffees and this is definitely one of them so anyway it's time for the wheel of death and the wheel of death this week is going to be Chemex I like my Chemex um, 
I'm always happy when the Chemex, it comes round for the Chemex's turn for the Wheel of Death because, um, yeah, I just enjoy brewed coffee from the Chemex. It is a great, easy brewing method to get on with. Right, I'm going to whack you on pause. I'm going to go and make delicious and tasty coffee and I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, so I'm back. Going to dive straight into the espresso. And what you get with the espresso is that typical El Salvador sweetness, but it's not chocolate. The descriptor I used for the Bourbon of this last year, and he's very prevalent in this, is Werther's Original. So those sweets that men, granddads are meant to give to small children, which I find very inappropriate. Why are granddads giving kids sweets? Hmm. Um, it has that kind of caramelly, kind of creamy, uh, sticky flavour to it. Um, where this differs from the Bourbon is there's some acidity going on in there. There's a lot more acidity going on. As an espresso, it's very good though. Because that sweetness balances out the acidity, it makes it more of a balanced cup. So into milk. You see, and again, that acidity powers through the milk. So, for me, it kind of has a little bit more complexity, a little bit more kind of boom, boom, boom going on. Um, in the milk, it's actually really good. So, let's move on to the brewed version. Try not to spill it everywhere. So, the sweetness is massively overpowering, like, you, 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 like, I can smell how sweet this is going to be in the brood. Do you know what, that's delicious. Like, I've rarely been so excited about cupping a coffee. So when we bought this, we bought it without trying it. Obviously, I've tried the coffee from San Rafael before, but it was like 5% of what we bought. So, you know, it's a very small percentage of it. And you buy it in the hope that it's going to be amazing. Um, and we had to agree to buy it because they had to put more, we had to pay more money for it because it was separated and it, it just took more time and, he, you know, kind of effort. Like, while I was there and I asked about it, they moved a group of the pickers across to the, uh, the Pacas area, which is right by where the sign is on the way in to go and do it but they took some of the best pickers from the Bourbon across to there just to pick this stuff for me which I kind of felt very excited about but also felt very guilty so we paid a little bit more money for it it is more of a coffee like I, I, I am I'm so pleased about the gamble that we've kind of taken here because when I did it I was like ah but in the cup I think it's phenomenal it, it is a, a, a in all three it's really good it's really good like, I haven't been this excited for quite a while. So, I hope that you're excited by it too. Um, and these are the reasons for travelling to Origin. These are the reasons for packing my bags and going spending 10 days traipsing around, bothering people. Is I would never have got to know about this coffee, and the world would never have got to know about this coffee, if I hadn't got off my backside and gone out there and then pestered and hassled and asked. And now, I, like, it's, it's a stunner. It's a stunner. So... Uh, San Rafael, uh, it's a washed process, it's a Pacas varietal, it's grown at 1400 metres on the Santorana volcano region, or near to the city of Santorana, um, um, and yeah, it's, it's a brilliant, brilliant So, uh, before I wrap up, in my mug goes on the road, so um, I should have really got the date for this, shouldn't I? Let me get my date. Very professional as always. I think it's the 21st, but I want to check because I don't want to give you the wrong date. Where are we? Da -da. Nah. I want the month. So, it would have been the wrong, no, would it? It wasn't, it was right. So, Saturday, the 21st of July, we are going to be doing an In My Mug Live. So, uh, if you're in the Manchester area, you should really come along. It's going to be at North Tea Power, which is one of our customers in the city centre of Manchester. 
Last year, I went up to North Tea Power and I did a uh, meet the roaster evening where basically I talked about uh, three processes of coffee from one farm and met some of their customers and we had some beers afterwards and it was really good. So uh, the farm we talked about was Finca uh, Argentina from El Salvador, which is actually not far from San Rafael. Um, when we talked about it, everybody was really excited. We tried all the different coffees and that was it. So this year we're following that up. So we're going to go up to North Cape Air and I'm going to do the In My Mug up there with the new crop Argentina, uh, which is tasting amazing. And we have the three processes again and super excited. But Alejandro, who, uh, him, well, his father owns the farm, he manages the farm. So Alejandro is involved in lots of, all of the day-to-day -day stuff with the farm and, 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 and all of the things there. He's going to come as well. So he's going to come to Manchester. You're going to get a chance to meet a grower. Uh, you can ask him questions. I, I'm going to encourage you over the next couple of weeks to send me questions via email that I will ask him while we do the In My Mug as well. Um, and you can come along. But ticket only. So there's an email address come up on your screen below there if you want to come. And please, if you do put your name down, like, come. Like, don't say, oh yeah, I'm going to come and then back out at the last minute. Because like, Alejandro's travelling all the way from El Salvador to come and do this. The least we can do is give him a, a, a great reception. And it is going to be oversubscribed, so you need to be quick. But email this address. First come, first serve. There are 30 places. And North Team Power are offering this to some of their customers too. So you have got to be quick. You've got to be super quick. So get the name in. And uh, I really hope that I can see you. And more importantly, I hope that you can meet Alejandro. Um, he is the coolest guy. Like the, a lot of the reason we're going to Manchester is he loves his real ale. So we're going to do a bit of a, a pub tour on there as well. And uh, yeah, sh show him what Manchester has to offer. So uh, maybe you can come out for the beers afterwards too as well. Um, and that would be really cool. So North Tea Power, 21st July. Be there or don't be there and watch the video on the day after. <laughs> okay, I am going to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, uh, it is a pleasure to uh, host you all. And um, what's that saying that I say at the end of every one of these? Oh, life is too short for bad coffee.